Hello, my name is Betsy Webb and I'm the superintendent of the Bangor School Department. Today I have with me Principal Paul Butler, principal of Bangor High School. And what we'd like to talk about is preparing students to be college and career ready. So Principal Butler, what does it really mean to be college or career ready? Uh, we, the, in the simplest terms, it means having options after you graduate from high school, whether they be uh, going on to post-secondary learning, associate's degree, or a bachelor's degree, or having some sort of credential or some sort of experience in high school that's uh, given the student opportunity to see the world of work, uh, dovetail the learning that they've engaged in the classroom with some type of experience that uh, not only prepares them in terms of credential or diploma or achievement, but uh, in a real sense has told them the step I want to take after high school, I have knowledge of and I feel like I'm prepared to take that step. So in the general sense, it's, it's those things, but also the traditional things really still matter in terms of uh, uh, the, what most of our students pursue for a second uh, post-secondary pathway, uh, college readiness, and a good rigorous high school program where the students really stretch themselves and had a deep, broad curricular exposure. Those are really important. Um, uh, opportunities to uh, sit for exams, whether they be for college credit granting opportunities, such as the AP or the CASIS, or any of the, of the, of the number of other exams that give a, a profile and sometimes real or potential opportunity to earn college credit to the next level. Right, and I think maybe different than in the past, maybe when I went to high school, I know you're behind me, but there really were different tracks, right. but not anymore today. Right. Really what right. we want are students to be able to enter college and to be successful no matter their age. It may be immediately following high school, right. it may be 10 years down the road, right. but really those careers that used to allow people to have a great pathway without getting a college degree or further learning right. are not there anymore. Right. Um, because we we continue to have a wonderful relationship with the technical school, United Technology Center, the regional te technical center. Uh, and there are opportunities for students to earn industry credentials or credits as they spend a half a year of the junior and or the senior year at Bangor High School and half a year at UTC. Mm -hmm. But it's absolutely true that with the single diploma, which has always been the case, but with the upping of expectations with the proficiency-based diploma, it's clear that students really need to engage academically as a foundation and secondarily in, uh, in industry credential or college credit programs that lead them toward an immediate employment pathway. I think it's true that those opportunities that you described are less and less, mm -hmm. which I think is not necessarily an unhealthy thing and that invites the student to explore deeper to invest in the all the academic components of high school in the applied learning components at UTC to give themselves those options after high school especially as the job market and careers uh, continue to unfold and materialize as they are today. Right and so when you say an industry credential what does that mean? Well uh, it's still very much in the traditional sense of of earning or engaging in learning experiences in high school where there may be a sector of employment in the main job market, the national job market, where uh, there are certain requirements, academic requirements, applied training and learning requirements where uh, they could enter the profession and have some sort of credential, whether it be an internship experience or the credential itself, where they can enter and, and go to work after high school. Okay. And so I know that you're talking about the academic components, and we can come back to that in a second, but would you share with the community what are the soft skills that we're working on with students to make sure that they are college and career ready? Right. And that's uh, taken some pretty s significant and real placement at the high school with our adoption, I guess it was three years ago, Work Ready. Mm -hmm. And Work Ready, the Work Ready credential is a, um, a combined effort of Department of Education, Department of Labor to identify the standards that a person uh, must be familiar with in order to be uh, real-time employable. The, not, not only to acquire the, the job, but to function professionally and to grow within the job. So there are things like uh, interpersonal communication skills, 
But pr prior to that, even uh, developing a resume, marketing yourself, preparing for an interview in a way where your your strengths are highlighted. Mm -hmm. uh, on the job, it's uh, interpersonal communication skills, conflict resolution, right down to functional things like customer friendliness and answering the phone and those types of things that um, are some of the, the well-traveled fundamentals in any career. Uh, work ready is a, is a process that students, uh, they, they tag along to a, an existing course at the high school mm -hmm. and they work through the seven standards of work and they work toward uh, being successful in that mock interview and as much as you can simulating the real pursuit of employment while you're a high school student looking ahead to the future. Mm -hmm. But um, soft skills, they have, they have broad, I guess, broadly understood uh, meaning to, to folks, whether they be community members or folks who are associated with schools. You're really talking about the traditional elements of being reliable, being a good communicator and problem solver, mm -hmm. uh, being uh, someone that can anticipate and problem solve on the, in the moment, mm -hmm. and not just narrowly focusing on a specific element or a specific type of employment, but having the skills that broader, in a broader sense, uh, uh, make you someone that people in the public in whatever sense that you are interacting with the public as a business person enjoy that experience and, and the company can grow with you and you with them. Right, right. And I've seen more and more examples of students really acquiring these skills and applying them every day right in school. Right. How to greet someone, making sure their attendance is you know, consistent and reliable. Yeah, that's absolutely critical. There is that component of work ready in addition to the demonstration of knowledge of the areas, seven areas of work. There's the expectation that student attends 95%. Mm -hmm. It's a critical marker. There's no accident that that's the accountab accountability measure for schools nationally, mm -hmm. that they attend 95% of the time. Reliability is really important. Mm -hmm. And especially the nature of instruction today and the things that we're asking kids to, to not only acquire fundamental understanding of, but be able to manipulate and think and create, losing that, that continuity of attendance and missing that time in class, whether it be a day or a series of days over time, really, really challenge a person, not only in the academic context, but in the employment context. Mm. And I, I think that the new graduation standards, I mean, they're much more rigorous than, say, when I attended right. high school. And there were students that were able to not attend and right. they could catch up quickly. Right. But it, it's very different today. Could you explain to sure. the community what it, you know, with this new law, proficiency-based diplomas, it's a significant increase. Yeah, no question. And the way I think about it is continuity. Mm -hmm. Continuity day in and day out. But it's very clear that to get students to, let's say, the functional level of competency for a student in mathematics is Algebra 2. Algebra and 2. No, no more, uh, under a, a traditionally credit-based diploma, it may be acceptable for that student to dart around in math and no discredit to that, capitalize on their strengths and meet them where they are as a learner. But with the, with the expectations of the, of the uh, state learning standards in mathematics, it really requires Algebra 2. Mm -hmm. And the linear pathway to Algebra 2 is just that linear. Mm -hmm. And having uh, interruptions for attendance, it really, it's challenged us in all the right ways to make sure that students are on a pathway. And we, in turn, challenge students to be here to engage so that Algebra 2 can be a reality for them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other examples too of the, the commitment to languages mm -hmm. and the expectation that students are, have purposeful communication on a language other than English. That requires two years of focused study that uh, s traditionally students may not have prioritized. Some who may have marked foreign language as a key prerequisite for admission into a college or university. Now that expectation travels to every student. Right. So all of those days, all of those portions of those years add up, and the challenge is keeping students on an aggressive, rigorous pathway with the knowledge that the game has changed to some degree and the standards have increased. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is that in order to get a high school diploma, one now has to get to Algebra 2. They have to have uh, world language. Right. What are the other differences? Uh, science and technology, mm -hmm. which is the... Uh, which is the, the state's description of the content areas. 
they have to have, students need to have a science and technology learning experience in every year. Awful. That differs from credits, where three credits, including lab science, might be expected. There's expected to be a learning experience every year. Mm -hmm. And overlaid with the learning experiences are new expectations for how students use the information that they acquire. They really need to think at high levels. They really need to not only understand, but process on individual levels, within groups, uh, over to stringing competencies over time, looking at information and, and those processes, applying them to new novel situations, or looking at things in new, with new lenses, that I think we've done a really good job of, of providing uh, linked opportunities over time. Our curriculum's outstanding, and I would put our, our approach up against anybody's in terms of the sensibility and the relevance of what kids are asked to learn. But there's no question that it's an increased standard, and uh, a student that, for whatever reason, isn't able to, with continuity, engage in those learning experiences will find increasingly difficult the path toward the diploma. Well, and I think that really has changed our approach to assisting students. Right. I mean, we now try to catch them as soon as they right. slip, and, it, and I mean, it makes all the sense in the world that right. we immediately plug them in with credit and proficiency recovery opportunities. Right. As a matter of fact, even as students begin their, their you know, first year of high school when they start to not only have experienced the changes that bring that that come with a move to a high school. Uh, when they part of that is um, experience the PSAT, mm -hmm. which is a it's a critical exam and longstanding. Our uh, intervention in terms of readiness and college career readiness begins with their first experience as ninth graders with the PSAT. Mm -hmm. Then we look at things like. Uh, the proven evidence that students who perform at certain levels may be at risk for the trajectory toward college readiness. And that's all in coordination with the college board's information about what over time the pattern of student performance has shown them and what schools can learn from. We look at course completion and the degree to which students meet course failure or fail to acquire credit, with the ultimate goal being some of the goal well, some of the some of the attend all of the attention all the time is on the four year run to college readiness, mm -hmm. but the intervention attention is as close to the time the student starts to get off path. Right. That's when you need to intervene, and we've done a number of things that that have have done just that, gotten right to that point of intervention, and found a way to get to that student as as quickly as possible. Mm. And I know we've seen a great reduction in the number of failures, and really have seen more students. And be able to get right back on track with this new process. Yeah, no question. The department heads and the teachers, it's a combined effort of not only using good information, but knowing kids well mm -hmm. and knowing families well and providing good information and having good monitoring techniques such that we catch that failure soon and try to get the student back on path. Another comment that we hear in the public throughout the state I haven't really heard these types of comments in Bangor, but when you hear people say um, seat time, they almost mm. feel like it's a negative. Oh boy, I love that one. <laughs> we see it differently. Yeah, Could you explain you know, that's, uh, how we address it? Essentially, that comment comes from, and the, you know, I would never discredit anybody's anybody's uh, heartfelt beliefs about improving education. It's the number one thing that we should do. Right. Um, much of that criticism comes around the idea of the credit, and the credit is a time-based element. And the criticism comes when promotion of change uh, comes at the expense of class time or suggests that the time that students spent in classrooms is just time wasted. Right. And when a person says, you're just a promoter of seat time, my rebuttal is any amount of time that I can get a student in front of our teachers who know where they're going, who will believe they will be effective with the student, yes, I am a I'm a staunch defender of seat time. So it's, it sometimes becomes a, uh, it's not really a dichotomy. People want good results for kids. Mm -hmm. We want good results for kids. We happen to believe we have a system that combines the credit component with the expectation of demonstrated proficiency. And I would say the most critical element of time to measure is engaged time. Right. And those things uh, uh, will be fleshed out. I know that you may want to mention that uh, on the 10th, Tuesday evening, we'll be hosting in Peaks Auditorium at 6 o'clock 
an information session for parents around what does the proficiency-based diploma mean, mm -hmm. uh, what are its origins, and what does pursuing a proficiency-based diploma at Bangor High School look like. Right. I guess in one more piece about seat time, I mean, we're really focus on acceleration at the right. moment a student is able to handle right. acceleration. And when you look at the um, retention rate at the college level, right. we know that students really will perform better if we can get them to college level work right. when we have them in, at the high school level, right. as they have those supports. Right. And then when they go on to college, they'll be that much more successful. There's all, there's all kinds of indicators. The University of Maine is, I believe it's a red, legislative requirement to enumerate the number of matriculated students who ended up in remedial courses at the university level. Consistently, we send the highest number of students to the state university system and have half or lower the rate of or retention or of uh, remedial courses for students. So those indicators are there. Mm -hmm. Our, the performance that we've seen, outlier performance in a lot of ways on students accessing and succeeding on advanced placement exams. Mm -hmm. All of those indicators tell us that the approach that we have, focusing on purposeful use of time, of planful, timely intervention, and generally uh, communication to kids that we're with you, you need to be with us, and the plan is to get you meaningfully across the diploma onto your next step. We think those things tell us it works. Mm -hmm. So uh, we feel good about it, but there's always more that we can do. Right. Well, I know that you have said often that really this effort, it, it, we're what I'm one of the largest high schools in Maine, certainly one of the top three largest high schools in Maine, but the work really comes down to tracking each individual student right. and their pathway to college and career readiness over those four years. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the, the connection with kids is, is number one. It's a people business. Mm -hmm. And kids... Uh, they are curious social beings. The, the, the challenge is to make what we're doing at Bangor High School the thing they would rather do rather than whatever else they could do. Right. And we think we're successful with that. And it does come down to that individual connection with kids. Mm -hmm. I prioritize it, administrators prioritize it, and teachers ultimately prioritize it, not only in the classroom, but in connections with activities and other things that round out the school experience for kids. Well, I and now maybe we could transition into the personal learning plan. Right. Every single Bangor High School student has a personal learning plan. That's right. And can you talk about how we even have a document that tracks yeah. the four years person by person, right. looking at activities to coursework right. to assessments? Right. I mean, it's really a black and white folder, but it's what it contains is the color of moving a kid to a new place, a student to a new place. Yeah, it's just that. It's a physical document, personal learning plan. Four, four faces, the ninth grade year, all of the uh, classroom experiences, assessment experiences, interpersonal connections, activities, the, uh, the direct instruction they receive in the first couple of years in guidance, their national assessments, the, whether or not they've, they've met that, at least bl in black and white sense, the College Readiness Index, how are their credit shaping up, and it's a physical document, hubbed in guidance, that gets physically reviewed every year by a department head, an administrator, and a counselor. Right. So that we're all on the same page, we're censusing the class as a whole, but really we're censusing all of the factors of achievement, of readiness of individual kids, at least once a year, but with all kinds of touches formal and informal otherwise as we head up to that review point. Right. And I know in reviewing this personal learning plan, I was excited to see that even career exploration and the college application right. process, all of that is tracked to right. make sure we don't have people falling through the cracks. I mean, there's a tail of the tape and there are certain indicators that spell whether or not a student is progressing toward that ultimate level of readiness. But there are other indicators that are purposely spread out over time, some in response to direct instruction, some in response to nudging, whether it be upping a, a course level than what a student might have, might have originally indicated. Uh, they step out of school a little bit and they try to see themselves in career by design in the sophomore year. 
it cycles back again to course selection. So it's a, it's a constant overlap with a student at the middle of current, near-term, and long-term opportunities that are all measured against uh, progress toward them. Right, right. It, thinking about this whole topic, is there anything I haven't asked you that you think would be wise to share with the community? Or are we going to rely on Tuesday, November 10th? <laughs> well, no, we're always open for the conversation. We know it can be confusing. Mm -hmm. Anytime I shared that in the ramp up to the proficiency based diploma, I made it a topic of conversation with literally every group of parents that I stood in front of or sat and had a conversation with. And it's not real until it's real. Mm -hmm. So some will come and have a, a, a good session of Q&A and information getting and receiving, et cetera. But it, it will only make sense over time. And I know, and I think we all would, would appreciate that people come to understandings to, in, in different timelines. Different ways. So we're always open for the conversation. Uh, I would say that if there's, at a point, if there's a, a conversation that we need to have with a student or a parent about concerns about that pathway, then the conversation gets more and more real but always supportive and forward-looking and we're looking forward to Tuesday night but we know that that's not it. We need right. more right. more touches. Right. The only other thing I think I would share is that this has an impact pre-k through grade 12. Right. Uh, really this process starts the moment a student enters school and that's right. why we are really emphasizing problem solving and right. communication and using a variety of strategies and higher order thinking and and really now, math, we're looking at pre-algebra or algebra one by the eighth grade. Right, really that target of ninth grade algebra is 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 a critical one in a lot right. of ways. Right, so we hope to see many people at the November 10th parent information session on proficiency-based diplomas, and that begins at what time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock at Peaks Auditorium. Thank you.